Okay, today I want to show you how we can generate a cave system like this. So because you see the cave, you see the uh, foliage on the ground, and in this case we have an example for our uh, RPG uh, type of uh, project, but you see also the foliage on the, on the top, you see the rocks, these splines that are just t these tunnels. We have rooms like this. And as you can see, we have multiple uh, entrance points that we could generate open spots for the top. Sections like this, um, the stairs up or down, whatever you need. And I generated all of this with our um, cave uh, building tool uh, toolkit. So let me show you how I've done that. The cave system is part of our environment building. And uh, if you navigate to the K folder, go to the map, the map example, you will open up this specific example. And in this video, I want to talk about a couple of things. First of all, I want to show you how this system is set up, how we can use this, and also about what the limitations are. Let me first start with a couple of limitations. Currently, this one is not uh, uh, procedurally generated as a wall system. So if we take a look at complete network like this one, this is manually set up with the tools that I've provided. However, it's not like you have an endpoint and a begin point and bam, it's auto generated. I think it is possible in the future. However, I am currently not focused on it. Maybe if someone wants to give it a try, uh, feel free uh, to do so. However, currently my main focus was on providing the, the base of this tool set. Let me now cover uh, the basics of how this is set up. I've split it up in multiple modular things. The first thing are the uh, tunnels. And I use these tunnels um, uh, to eventually being used as splines. I also made caps, and that is to close off a tunnel or an open spot. I also have uh, floors uh, with the stones uh, and some predefined strips. Nice. The second category is the rooms, uh, are the rooms. Uh, just like the tunnels, the tunnels we have uh, a small, medium and a large tunnel. And also for the rooms, I have a small room, a medium room and a very large room. And I just want to uh, note that how these things are set up. First of all, I individually place meshes. And so if you want, you can also do this yourself. So I place all kinds of meshes. The second stage is, is I combine these meshes to one single entity like this. And that single entity, that one is being used in a blueprint that I made, which defines all kinds of logic. The other two categories are uh, uh, the roofs. So I have these uh, closed roofs, but I also have uh, open roofs with this spot right here. As you can see, I place a lot of these black meshes and that is simply for walking light, so I can really check out how things work. Also, for the eventually for these rooms, I'm just placing these just as an extra security mesh to make sure that there's no uh, uh, light leakage. And if there is, you can always add things or remove it. Or I just uh, move it a bit, uh, just to your liking. And the last one are the stairs. Also, this one has individual placed meshes. These are individual. This one is a combined one. And this one is in a blueprint. Now, if you navigate to the K folder, you will see the base, the cap, um, uh, our lights, the rooms, and the tunnels. These are the most important ones. And the PCG uh, is used to generate things within the current rooms. Let me start with the spline. So this one is a cave spline small, and this one is a child of the cave spline base. Here I have defined all kinds of functions in the spline base to add cap, add start, add room end, add room at the start, what kind of room or cap to spawn, uh, uh, things like that. So let me show you how this works. When I press G, I can see all the spline points if I have selected things like this. And we can adjust these points. Like so. 
and then it will simply try and regenerate the, the wall spline. And if we take a look inside, then we see it is, oh, it's really dark here. But you get the idea. Now let me talk a bit about these settings because we have these roof lights, these are spawned right there, or wall lights, these are torches there, uh, and we can add a room at the end or a room at the start. Now, this one is the start, I think, and this one is the end. But we can say, okay, what kind of room do I want to spawn? Well, I want to spawn a room small. So if I do that here at the start, then it will try and match the points uh, of the room, the opening that I defined in the room base uh, to that specific spline. So if I press G and select the room, then I can see, okay, I have defined three uh, connection points is what I call them. And this one is zero, this one is two, and this one is one. And I've also defined these points here with this red arrow. And based on these connection points, it tries to match the spline to that matching point. So let's say if I wanted a different room, then I can simply just delete this one again, click on this spline, and let's say I want a room medium and the room and now there's a medium room however maybe I don't want it to connect it at this specific point but at another point then I can delete this one again click on the spline point and say I want to spawn it at connection one at room and now you see oh uh, it is connecting to connection point one however connection point one apparently had a jaw offset so we delete the room again and then we're going to try okay let's do a manual jaw from minus 90. Oh. yeah i think that fits oh nearly there is a small uh rotation so i click on delete again click on minus 125 at yeah, perfect. So this looks nice, right? So, and this is also the reason why I'm currently not yet auto generating everything uh, because I just made a toolkit just to play around with it uh, uh, to manage things quickly. But you still need to try and adjust things because it's so um, uh, custom, uh, these assets, if you know what I mean. So now we see this room. Um, I think we don't have any PCG on the ground. So I can click on this room. I'm going to navigate to the PCG component and click on generate. Ah, yeah, nice. So now it's all generated these shrubs, these, uh, these small rocks, and uh, these large rocks there, which gives a good, uh, 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 yeah, good vibe. And I have some parameters here so we can adjust things like offset height. The ratio is probably the amount if I. Oh, yeah, I think there's more now. And they are also exposed here in the PCG variables at the top. So here I set this one to one now and now. There's way more meshes and things like that. So now the next question would be, okay, let's, uh, we have this medium room, which is still quite large. Um, now we have, okay, which room to spawn? And at point zero, I want to add a cap. So this one is now closed. And I would like to add a, another room. Let's do a small room at point two. Oh, and uh, by the way, you can see we have a target connection point and a source connection point. So sometimes you really need to check okay, which one am I again? So on this point, I know it's the source connection point two. And I, this one requires a manual jaw of 90, I think. Check, yeah, perfect. So now we have another room, and on this one we can say, hey, I want to have oh, a spline, but it's obviously on that one. Um, let's add a medium spline there. Perfect. And we can get this one, get these points. Uh, hold uh, Alt to create a new spline point like this. And we can move around to play with it. What you will note is that if you move the spline around while it has collision enabled, then it will be very slow. So I would advise to disable the collision when you're editing and eventually when you are finished, then you can click on enable collision on the generated spline to regenerate the collision again. Because during, it's just slow and that's only because of the collision. And now on the end of the spline, let's add another room, a small one yeah, like this. 
and let's generate two caps on this. I think this one, yeah, perfect, and that one. So now this is like more of a uh, of a treasure room at the end of this spine. And uh, here. Perfect. So now you see that we are really quickly generating a cave system. And I think that's the power of this tool set. Even though it still needs some manual work, uh, it's still fun uh, to do. It's really quick. And remember, you can click on these spline meshes, things like that. Click on the PCG and try and generate meshes on the ground and also on the roof. Yeah, now we have some flowers on the roof, things like that. I hope you like this. Obviously, there is a lot to this system. I, there's a lot of things that I didn't explain, but you can just try and play around with the variables and uh, just tweak it, the god rays. Um, um, it's, it's really funny. You can get great scenes really quick. And don't hesitate to make your own rooms like this and just play around with it. And uh, uh, you could get really fun results really quick. Just, just take a look at these blueprints that I made. Uh, make a new child of the base. Here are the base uh, base blueprints, and just try to add some new uh, uh, connection points that I just placed right here, like so. If you're going to use the system in your own uh, project, obviously you would need to have a couple of things required, like PCG. Uh, that's the most obvious one. But besides that, I don't think there is anything else required at this moment. Please let me know what you think of this. Uh, always feel free to provide feedback. I hope you enjoyed, uh, enjoyed this as much as I do. Um, and I hope you have a great day. Bye. Congrats, you have reached the end of this video. And of course, uh, always feel free to reach out. For instance, in the comments below, via Discord or mail. And don't forget to check out our website and Discord. I'm happy to talk to you there. Have a nice day. Bye.